Having an available source of water at the blacksmith shop is really important. Whether that's for controlled cooling of the piece you're working on so that you can get a bend just in the right place, or maybe you need to cool off the end you're holding on to because after a little while that starts to get too hot to hold on to. Maybe you need water to control a coal fire and help the coking process in the coal fire. Worst case scenario, you need water for emergencies like cooling off a burned hand or maybe putting out a little fire because a hot cutoff landed in some trash you should have picked up yesterday. Typically, the container blacksmiths keep water in is referred to as a slack tub or maybe a quench tank. Sometimes you can get by with something as small as an old tin can, and that's useful at the anvil for cooling off punches and things like that while you're working. Also useful over at the vise if you're doing long twists and they're not twisting evenly and you need to cool a little bit off, you can pour a little bit of water out of the can and cool things off. For a lot of things, a can on a stick is really handy to have. But for the most part, you're gonna want a much bigger container of water. The easy solution for most people is just gonna be the ubiquitous five gallon bucket. Most people have these all over the place. If you don't, you can almost always find them for free. People that have been working on houses get drywall mud in these, paint in these. Kitty litter sometimes comes in a bucket, maybe not this big. But there are probably people throwing out five gallon buckets in your neighborhood all the time. All you have to do is ask, or maybe sneak them out of the trash on trash day. There are a couple of problems with a five gallon bucket. One, it's a little bit low, and depending on what you're doing, you have to bend over a lot, and that might be inconvenient. But the bigger problem is it's plastic. And that means over the years, it's gonna get brittle and one day you're gonna bump into it and it's gonna crack right down the side, dump all that water in your shop floor. Concrete floor, maybe not a big deal. Dirt floor, that means you're gonna have a lot of mud in your shop. Another problem is that sometimes what you're quenching is sharp and you might poke a hole in the bottom or it is so hot that it doesn't cool off fast when you're quenching it and if you hit the side of this, you can burn right through it. And again, you got water all over your shop. So while plastic buckets are easy, easy to replace if you screw one up, they may not be the ideal in the long run. Of course, if you do like plastic and want something really big, sometimes you can find these 55 gallon plastic drums pretty cheap. These were something I got for free. They had a solid top, I had to cut the top off. They're kind of handy for keeping water in, but I don't use it for a quench tank. I just use this outside the shop. It really is just up to what you want to use in your shop and what you have available. Now, an old steel drum isn't a bad choice if you can get it cheap enough, but these things are gonna rust, and they rust out really pretty quick. A lot of these things only last a year or two. They're usually in used condition so that if they ever had any kind of a liner that's been worn out, maybe they've been beat around a little bit, already starting to rust when you get them. Sometimes they're gonna have holes and leaks in them. This one leaks water already, so I just use it as a trash can, not for water. Perhaps you can even find a smaller drum somewhere. This one had some kind of fastener. It says three quarter, 10 by two. Not exactly sure what that was, but this would make a nice little quench drum but it's still gonna rust out a little bit faster than you'd like. It's heavier than the other drum, it's thicker material, but it's probably not gonna last more than a year or two. So there again, I use this as a trash can over in the little shop. Now one slack tub that I really like, although they're kind of hard to find in good conditions and they can fall apart on you, be a problem in the winter if they freeze, is a half of a whiskey barrel. You can find those at garden centers, people use them as planters. And that's not a bad slack tub. I've used those in the past, but if you drain it for the winter, when you come back in the spring, it's going to have shrunk up and it's not gonna hold water. And it's really hard to get them to swell back up again evenly so that they're watertight. So it's not an ideal solution, but it looks really cool in your blacksmith shop. The one I've been using for years is this welded up steel tank. It's heavier than the material that's in the drum, so it's lasted pretty well. I have had to empty it out and repair a few leaks from time to time because it does rust and starts to leak in places. And I notice around the top it's getting thin. In fact, I can't even fill it up. In fact, I can't even fill it up anymore. It's got a hole on this backside, so that's as far as I can put water in it now. And it's not gonna be long before this leaks out completely. I'll probably be able to get through this summer, but by next summer, 
I'm probably looking for a new tank. And I'm looking for a new tank over in the little shop that we're working on, the little hand tool shop. And I think I may have found the perfect thing. Well, maybe not perfect in every way. What I think would be the absolute perfect quench tank in a blacksmith shop is a barrel like this in stainless steel. Those are available for 400 plus dollars. And then you still have to have them shipped. I can't find one locally. And that's a little bit over my choke point for buying a barrel to put water in. However, there is an aftermarket product that you can find if you're lucky. It echoes. This is a stainless steel beer keg. I think they hold a little bit over 15 gallons of water. Not a bad amount, probably a little bit less than this other tank holds, but it's stainless steel. It has handles on top if you need to relocate it or dump it out in the winter so it doesn't freeze. And with 15 gallons, you can probably wrestle this around and move it. Some of these others would have way too much water in them, although you could bail water out until it is light enough to move. Now, I didn't know of any place to find one of these locally, so I bought this one off of eBay. I think it was $160 with tax, and that included shipping. Now, that's more than I'd like to pay, but I don't know why this will ever wear out. I should have this for the rest of my blacksmithing career. Right off the bat, there's only one real problem with it, and that is it's still sealed, and I think it's still got a little bit of pressure in it just from shipping. They ship it up to a higher altitude from wherever it was, so I gotta vent the pressure. Probably also has a little bit of beer left in it, which is gonna stink. So we'll take care of venting the pressure off of this, then we'll take a look at cutting the lid off. After watching a few of the YouTube videos, it looks like the thing to do is put a rag over this so any beer that spews out of this doesn't hit you in the face. I'm using an angle grinder that has a rear handle position and that allows me to kind of hold on to the valve as I work around this way to get a cleaner cut. Also, the guard just rubs against the inside, so I should be able to maintain my spacing very nicely and get a nice clean cut on this. Well, cutting that took about 15 minutes, including changing discs. I'm going to go ahead and use some flat discs to clean up the ragged edge. These come from Combat Abrasives, and they are a regular video sponsor here at Black Bear Forge. There's a link and a discount code down in the video description if you'd like a discount on your next order. I started at 36 grit and finished it off at 120 grit, and that greatly reduces the chance of cutting yourself if you've got to reach in there at some point. I think I will rinse the grinding dust and the stale beer out of the tank before I fill it up. This might well be the perfect slack tub for this little blacksmith shop. It's not too big, still holds a fair amount of water, and it's stainless steel, so it's not likely to rust out and start leaking all over the place or burn a hole through it like a plastic one might. 
but if this works out as well as I think it will, I'll need to find another one for the main shop because I don't think the slack tub I've gotten there is going to hold up very much longer. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have time in your day to get into your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.